Jesus teach, we um, we saw we saw a pattern, and and we've been working on that pattern because that pattern helps us in seeing uh, in seeing uh, all of the scriptures. Um, one one of the things that um, we like to do, I like to do, is uh, rather than try to create teaching methods, just just observe the ones that have been given us. And when we observe the ones that have been given us, then uh, uh, we can be absolutely sure, absolutely certain of uh, being able to uh, be pleasing to the Lord because, of, you know, if you want to please the Lord, just do we do what he do. No. <laughs> just be a copycat. Just, just you know, uh, 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 use the methods he, he uses. Use the teachings that he uses. And we'll surely uh, be uh, pleasing unto him. Amen. 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 <clears throat> and of course, we did three things. We saw the relationship that God is looking for in Matthew chapter 6. We saw master and servant. In verse 24, no man can serve two masters, right? He'll either love one, hate the other. And then um, uh, when we got to verse 33, when we were on the concluding remarks to that paragraph, he once again says, seek ye first the kingdom of God. And of course, the kingdom is uh, made up of subjects and a king, mm -hmm. all right? So we're not looking for any magic. We just want to find out what the Lord is teaching us and, uh, and, and follow those instructions. And then in the middle of it, in the midst of it, to help us with a, a develop a master-servant relationship, we had awareness. We talked about awareness. And the Lord just makes you aware of who He is and what He does. Uh, he, would, he would ask a question. Uh, is not life more than food? Of course it is. Mm -hmm. Is not the body more than clothing? Of course it is. All right. Then he says, "Look at the birds of the air." Mm -hmm. All right. Now the birds of the air. The, those examples are special because the birds. He said they don't. They don't plant. They don't plow. They don't build barns and put food in them. They don't build processing plants or whatever. He says, but uh, uh, your Heavenly Father takes care of them. God takes care of them. Mm -hmm. All right? And what he's trying to show us is when we, if we look at the birds, if we follow God's instructions like the birds do, then uh, God's going to take care of us. And then he says, we're much more valuable than they, mm -hmm. as far as God is concerned. Now, you know, in our human minds, we, we sort of feel like, you know, the birds and the dogs and all of that are equal to humans and... And we sort of, uh, you know, humanize them, but God doesn't do that. God says you are much more valuable than the birds. All right? Now, um, so as, as we become more aware of God, uh, we, 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 the master-servant relationship makes so much more sense. All right? If God takes care of birds, then we know if we do what he's designed us to do, and he'll take care of us. And you got to remember that. You got to remember that uh, God, God's purpose for us is not tied to our purposes. Now that's the killer. That's where you got to put your pride in your pocket. God's purpose for us is not the same as our purpose. God's purpose isn't, isn't tied to our timeline. God's purpose isn't tied to our purpose. Okay? We will, take our, we will take religion and tie it all into God looking out for us and keeping us happy and keep taking our diseases away and keeping money in our pocket and all that kind of stuff. Well, that's not the way God operates. All right? God's purpose for us is, is far greater than that. Okay, now, um, so awareness, the more awareness we have, the more we learn to serve Him. All right? He gives us plenty of areas in our lives where we serve Him, we serve God. All right? 
the crack dealer, he serves God. Uh, the, the, the mugger, he serves God. He does what God tells him. All right? When the mugger get ready to take a breath, what does he do? He sure. breathes air. He don't breathe water. All right? He, he, puts, he takes the air in through his mouth or his nostrils and puts it in his lungs. He don't put it in his ear. All right? And whose instructions is that? God's. When he get ready to beat his heart, Somebody say your heart beats what a hundred thousand times a day or something. I don't, I don't, I don't know how many. But he get ready to beat his heart. Guess who we rely on to beat his heart? Uh -huh. Huh? Uh huh? That's right. Donald Trump and ex stupid, but every time he get ready to lift up his foot to take a step, guess who he rely on? Uh -huh. God. Everybody. So what he's saying now, the reason why we don't think of that because we're just not aware. It's right there in front of us. Yeah. We open our eyes, guess who makes us see? God. We sit down at the table, guess whose chicken we eat? God. Did you make you sit down at the table and eat your own chicken? Try it. Try it. <laughs> Try eating the chicken you made. Huh? The, the potatoes you made. Try eating the potatoes you made. Huh? That's right. And then when you want to eat and be nourished, uh, don't put it in your mouth. Just put it on your leg and smash it with your kneecap. See if that works. <laughs> huh? So, so we are already in obedience to God. If you want an obedience to God, you come in here with a box full of junk. You'd have a defibrillator in there. You'd have an oxygen tank in there. You'd have a, something to hold you on the ground when, when, when you thought gravity was going to let you go. You see, we're all in obedience to God. Look at the birds of the air, Jesus would say. We all obey God, okay? Because God puts an urgency in our physical obedience to Him. All right? You know, you can, you can, you can go along, keep going if you want. Sooner or later, you're going to eat something. Yeah. Huh? Because God puts an urgency in our physical life. Now what happens is then, then God gives us other things that are important. Maybe even more important than eating. And he leaves us to put the urgency in it ourselves. See, stuff being urgent and stuff being important is two different things. Jesus once told a story about um, uh, a man, a, 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 a farm, a man who owned a farm, who gave his workers his money. And the Bible says he went into a far country and relied on them to take care yeah. of his property. Mm -hmm. And then the Bible says, after a long time, he returned to take an account of the talents or the money that he gave. <coughs> now, you know what happens if, if somebody gives you some money to take care of them, you go away for a long time. Mm -hmm. I ain't coming back. Uh -huh. They ain't coming back. <laughs> you know, you know what happens. They go away for a long time. That's right. Uh huh. And so the sense of urgency is up to you. Mm -hmm. All right. And then uh, uh, when the, when the, when the, when the when the king came back, when the owner came back, then of course he wants to know what you do with my stuff. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And of course, he gave one five talents. He says, well, how about you? He said, well, you gave me five, and here then you got, I got ten for you. <clears throat> Next one, he gave one, two, and he says, here you go, I got four for you. Mm -hmm. And next one, he gave him only one. And he says, I was afraid. Mm -hmm. And I dug a hole in the ground to make sure that I didn't lose it. I didn't want to take no chances. 
So what's going on? See, the urgency. The urgency. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know why you pay your rent every month? Mm -hmm. Huh? Because mm -hmm. the landlord, the landlord applies some urgency. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's right. He get lightweight urgency, heavyweight urgency. If you're five days late, you will owe me extra $20. That lightweight. Mm -hmm. Then he said, if you 10 days late, 20%. I'm going to put you in court. Mm -hmm. And if you're 30 days late, they're going to come and put your stuff on the street. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, so you have urgency, light, <coughs> medium, and heavy. That's right. <laughs> All right. But see, what happens is when the Lord teaches us, uh, he doesn't, when he gives us the spiritual things to do, he doesn't apply, he doesn't apply urgency to them. He relies on us to apply our own urgency. And we need to make it urgent because it's important. <clears throat> right. Jesus said, what, what is the profit of man if he gained the whole world? And lose his soul. So he lets you know the spiritual things are more important than everything else. And uh, <clears throat> so he, he teaches awareness, and that's that's what uh, that's what we need to do when um, when we're sharing the message of the gospel, because uh, the spiritual things the Lord relies on you to do your own urgency. All right? So to say, this is important. I'm getting up. I'm going to worship God. This is important. I'm going to share this message with my friend. Good to see, good to see Sister Sheila's sister here with us. And Sister Sheila said, this is urgent. This is important. I'm creating my own urgency. Amen. You understand what I'm saying? It's urgent. And so when we're aware of that, and we're aware of the fact that when we submit ourselves to God's way of doing things, Christ's way of doing things, then, uh, then we realize that uh, you know, he's pleased with us, and then we also realize that in the end, in the long run, that's the best way to do it. All right? So, and then, of course, he says, seek first the kingdom of God. <coughs> do, do that first. That's the most important, the things of the kingdom of God, and that's the kingdom. So when you come in, you're not looking to do it your way. You're not looking to to come in and figure out something new, to give to God, to glorify Him. You're looking, you, you're looking to find out what He has told you to do and do it. Amen. Amen. Forget all that other stuff. You know, we, 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 we've, turned, we've turned church into a sideshow. Uh, usually a cheap sideshow. Mm -hmm. Huh? And, uh, and and as a result, because we want to do this, we want to we want to get more people. We want to do, but that's not what's important. What's important is that we have we be the kingdom of God. We go in there. We go in with an attitude of God. What do you want me to do? It right. takes some doing to get yourself to the point where you want to be told what to do. Amen. That's, 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 that's the point we need to do with our children, huh? Get them to the point where they want to be told what to do. Amen. Because somebody's going to tell them what to do. Oh, yeah. That's right. Huh? That's right. Oh, yeah. uh, and they're not choosing who's telling them what to do. That's right. Then they're wrong, they wind up following the wrong person. Yeah, amen. That's right. Amen. Okay. So awareness and and our, and, and our key, our foundation of our faith is developing a master-servant relationship with Jesus. Now, I know we didn't have a whole lot of problems with master-servant. I know we can't stand the idea of having no master. But I tell you one thing, when the master is Jesus, that turns the whole picture around. Mm -hmm. Amen. Come desiring to be told what to do. Then, of course, if you seek first the kingdom of heaven and his righteousness, 
Then he said, all the all the th- all the necessary things of life will be added to you. He said, I'm gonna take care of you. Look at the birds. Look at the birds. When last you see a bird fall out of the sky because he was starving to death? Look at the birds. Huh? <coughs> you know? And he said, God takes care of them. And then he said, the, the, the grass in the field, the weeds, they have blossoms on them. God will take care of all of them. One by one, individually, God takes care of them. And so he's saying, when you do what the Lord has told you to do, and you make him your master, you make him your king, then he will see to it that you have all the things that you need. All right? Amen. Thoughts, comments? John 15, let's go. John 15. Yes, 15th chapter of the Gospel of John. Jesus said, I am the true vine, my father's husband. And Jesus does a lot of I am. I'm the bread of life. I'm the way of truth and the life. Jesus does a lot of I am. But here he says, I am the true vine. Now, when he says true vine, that necessarily suggests that there's some other kinds of vines. Yeah, that's true. That's right. <coughs> now he wouldn't have said that true. He said, I am the true vine. The real vine. Mm-hmm. <coughs> now, he says that because there's plenty of other kinds of vines in there, out yeah. there. Jesus is always warning us of other things out there. Mm -hmm. And he teaches us over and over again that religion is full of deceit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, Brother just said, uh, Jesus would say, beware of false prophets that come to you in sheep's clothing and anywhere they're ravening wolves. Jesus gives a judgment scene in Matthew chapter 7 where he says, many shall come to me in that day. Hmm. Say, Lord, Lord, if we not prophesied in thy name, thy name cast out devil, I named them many wonderful work. There's the prophets, there's the exorcists, mm-hmm. there's the miracle work. Yes, sir. And then when they get to Jesus, he's going to say to them, I never knew. You. Now, th- now that's the worst I never knew you that you can yeah. have. Mm-hmm. Because you ain't got a chance to go back mm-hmm. and straighten up and do it right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, you may have you may have had some some tough I never knew you's in your life. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, you go on a job, new job, and you working for two. You work your two weeks and then wait your other two weeks to get your first check. And you walk up to the window and they say, mm-hmm. I never knew you. Who are you? <laughs> you will be upset. Go to school for a year. Get your, take all your college classes, study, burning the midnight oil, and learning the books and stuff. Graduation day come and Everybody's walking across the stage, and you get up there where they hand out the diplomas, and they say, "Who are you?" <laughs> we don't have nobody in that school yes, by that name. That's right. right. There, there, you, there's some rough. I never knew you. Maybe you go home for Thanksgiving. 
you know, you get on 95 and you get down into Georgia and you get off 95 and you get on the dump two lane road and then a one lane road and then you get on the dirt road and you get all the way back up in the country and back home and knock on the door and mama come to the door and say, who are you? Alzheimer's. <laughs> see, the Lord didn't say this because he had Alzheimer's. The Lord don't get Alzheimer's. That's right. <laughs> Who are you? There's some terrible, you can have some terrible I never knew you's, but I'm going to tell you, none of those I never knew you's is going to hold a match to this one. After you've lived your whole life and you, you've been following the, 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 the wonderful workers and you've been following the prophets and the exorcists and all of those people <laughs> and you've been living all of this religious stuff to the best of your ability and you get up before the Lord and he says, I never knew. He didn't even say, I knew, used to know you, but you messed up. Uh-huh. From the get-go. He said, I never knew you. The whole time you prophesied, I didn't know you. The whole time you were you were exercising the devil out of folk. That's right. And they spitting up oatmeal and all that kind of stuff. I never knew you. Huh? The whole time you dealing with the miracle workers, oh, mm -hmm. you know, and your tumor went away, and then, mm -hmm. and then after that you you was broken, a check showed up in the mailbox, and after that, mm -hmm. you know, did did you know? <laughs> for twenty five thousand for, for life <laughs> and better, <laughs> huh? And after all of that, mm -hmm. you gonna get to the judgment, and he's gonna say, I never. Mm -hmm. Sure. Look, religion is full of deceit. Mm -hmm. God don't have to worry about people out there doing, doing evil and stuff. Because the more evil it is, the better they like. They'll put, a, they'll put on a devil costume with horns on it and a pointed tail and walk around the street. They don't care about doing evil. They'll do evil and put it on the internet, put it on Facebook. Mm -hmm. He worry about them is people who want to find the Lord <coughs> that the devil has to get focused on. Mm -hmm. And sometimes, sometimes the deceit is obvious. And we don't catch it because we just don't do our homework. Mm -hmm. Person tells you you belong to the Seventh-day Adventist or whatever church, whatever. And, and you look in the Bible, and you can't find that church nowhere. Amen. Amen. And people in there shouting and getting praise to God and doing push-ups, and, 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 and they, just, they just hallelujah. Yes. And you look in the Bible for that religious organization, yeah. and not in nowhere. And folks just happy. <clears throat> I mean, they devout. Mm -hmm. But you know what? You can't rely on the fact that people are devout. When the, when 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 in Acts two, and uh, and Peter preached that first sermon in Acts two mm -hmm. about the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Do you know what the Bible says? They were devout men. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Out of every nation on the earth. And there was a problem, approximately 200,000. And only 3,000 of the devout people. <laughs> We're looking at the wrong thing. Mm -hmm. All right? Jesus just plain tells us that this thing is full of deceit. So it behooves us just answer the questions. You know, if we follow the Bible, <coughs> if we just open the Bible and follow the Bible, is it possible for us to become something that's not in the Bible by following the Bible? That's a hard question. You got to really put your pride in your pocket. Is it possible 
if we just follow the Bible, mm -hmm. is it, I and mean, everything's out there, Methodist, uh, Catholic, Presbyterian, and then if you get to two or three hundred denominations, then you have broke people who are non-denominational, mm -hmm. and they claim that all of them is right. All of them are okay. You know, just go from bad to worse. Mm -hmm. Is it possible to follow the Bible and become something that's not in the Bible by following the Bible? Now, I know you already know the answer. That's right. It's not possible. Huh? It's not possible. So when somebody tells you belong, when when you pop up and end up belonging to something you can't read about in the Bible, mm -hmm. then guess what? You've been deceived. Amen. Amen. Doesn't that make sense? Yes. Well, that's a, it's what we call it. No, 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 no. And you call it what the Bible calls it. If you're following the Bible. <coughs> I am the true vine. Now see, Jesus had the same challenge with these apostles. That's, that's, that's why, he, that's who he's talking to right now. Mm -hmm. Talking to his apostles, and he's at the end of his life. He only has a week or so to go. Alright? So he's getting serious with them. Alright? There were plenty of people, religions, for them to follow, they could follow back in those days. Just like there are plenty of different religions for people to follow now. They could be Pharisees, Sadducees, Essenes, those. They, they could be any number. And those, and those were the Jewish denominations. Mm -hmm. And Jesus stands up in the midst of all of that. Now, I know he struggled with them and these other religions all along. Mm -hmm. Huh? Mm -hmm. He told him every plant that my heavenly Father has yes, not planted mm -hmm. shall be rooted up. Yes, sir. Leave them alone. Mm -hmm. They be blind leaders of, of the, the blind. blind. And if the blind lead the blind, yes, sir. they both shall fall into the ditch. And he ain't talking about I, I'm innocent because Reverend so and so told me. <laughs> Told mm. me to do so and so and told me to be so and so and so. Uh uh, uh uh, you ain't innocent. Mm -hmm. And you know, back in the days when you had to ride, you had to go hundreds of miles to, to, to look at the scrolls for an hour or two, and, and, and that's all you had. They had no excuse. So, no, you got excuse. You got no excuse. So, right on your hip or in your pocketbook. You walking around with with a hundred di different dictionaries. You walking around with 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 fifty different Bible translations. You walking around at the tip at the tip of your finger. Yes. You know, and that's one thing I like is because I like for what I teach to be checked out. Amen. I tell you that when the Lord came, where He started was called ecclesia. And it's different from what we practice today as church. Mm -hmm. I want you to go look it up. Amen. I, I, ain't, I ain't trying to slick nobody out of anything. I want you to go and look it up. And if you don't think it's important enough for you to look it up, then, uh, then that's on you. Because seek ye first the kingdom of God mm -hmm. and his righteousness. I want you to go and find out if what I'm telling you is true. If I tell you that uh, you know, all our modern churches and whatnot are not found in the Bible, I want you to go look for one of them. Church of Jesus Christ of the Latter-day Saints. Find it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and the only thing I ask of you is after you find it, you come back and show it to me so I can, you know... Straighten you out. That's right. Straighten me out. That's right. Yeah, that's what we do. We straighten each other out. Mm -hmm. That's how. That, that, that's that's the reason why I'm so open about what I teach. Because if it's not right, challenge me. Amen. Amen. Challenge me. A amen. Amen. Yes, that's what that's what happens in ecclesia. Now, 
Now, when you're in church, you know, don't don't question your pastor and don't upset the the, the apple cart and mm -hmm. all that kind of stuff. But when in ecclesia, we challenge each other. No. We get out, we share it, we teach it. And if it's not true, we find out. Mm -hmm. If yeah. I tell you the Methodist church not in the Bible, and nobody in the Bible ever became a Methodist, mm -hmm. therefore you, 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 you're playing with fire. If you choose that way, then go on in the book. Mm -hmm. You know? Uh, Google it up. That's right. You know, we, we really have absolutely no excuse. Google up Methodist Church and see if the, see if Jesus started it or see if John Wesley started. John Amen. Charles Wesley started. Amen, Amen. preacher. Amen. See if it started in see if it started in Jerusalem or see if it started in Europe. <coughs> mm -hmm. you know, Google it up. Find out. Amen. We have no we really have no excuse whatsoever. And the only reason why we can be, continue to be a part of these things and not in the Bible mm -hmm. is because of our own pride, our own egos, our own whatever. Amen? Amen. And, uh, and the Lord's not accepting that. Amen. Okay. I am the true vine. Amen. My father is a husband. That's the gardener. Mm -hmm. He's the one to take care of the vine. Farmer. Mm -hmm. Farmer. Every branch in me, now he's talking to his disciples now. He's not talking about religious denomination. You need you talking about this branch inside. Because mm -hmm. that branch ain't inside. Mm -hmm. That branch is in human mm -hmm. imagination. Mm -hmm. He's talking to individual disciples. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purges it that it might bring forth more fruit. Now, I know we all say these selectors. We don't want to know. We don't want to act like we know what purging means and pruning and all that kind of stuff. But uh, you know what it means. Yes. He cut it back. Mm -hmm. All right? So all, everybody in Christ gets cut. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if you're bearing fruit, you get cut back. Mm -hmm. If you're not bearing fruit, you get cut off. Get cut off. <laughs> everybody... <laughs> Everybody gets cut. Mm -hmm. Now cutting hurts. Mm -hmm. Cutting challenges. Yes, it does. Cutting make you uncomfortable. Yes, it does. Huh? <clears throat> but now God is the one that cuts it. Now I want you to I want you to see what's happening here, because once again we're dealing with the foundation principles. All right? We said that our relationship needs to be a master-servant relationship. We said our relationship needs to be uh, a subject-king mm -hmm. relationship. Now Jesus says our relationship needs to be a branch vine, vine relationship. Mm -hmm. These are all figures to describe how we should relate to the Lord. Mm -hmm. All right? The branch is in the vine to do what? Bear fruit. The branch is bear fruit. <clears throat> All right? Make more disciples. Make more disciples. Fruit reproduces after its own kind. Mm -hmm. All right? That's what we're in Christ for. Amen. 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 Period. We're not in Christ so you can pay your tithes and the Lord will bless you with a new car. You're not in Christ so that you can have a nice 
a family or a nice business. Now, the Bible is so true that to any extent you follow it, you're going to be blessed. Amen. 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 The principles. Yes, sir. If you want a good family, open your Bible. Amen. Amen. You want a good business, open your Bible. Amen. You want a good community relationship, open your Bible. Amen. You want to bring your community together in righteousness, <clears throat> open your Bible. Amen. All right? And not only that, but Jesus says, Jesus says about the things that you need. He says, if you seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, he said, all your skin will be added. He said, I'm going to throw that in as extra. Mm -hmm. You don't have to make that your objective. He said, you just seek first the kingdom and his righteousness, and I'm going to throw that in as extra. Mm -hmm. Amen. Huh? But why have a good family, a good business, why have a good community situation? Why have all of these things and then be lost? Mm. Oh. Get the big prize. Mm. <laughs> huh? Mm -hmm. get, get the big prize. The Eternal prize. life in Christ. The mm. grand prize. Eternal life in Christ. Mm -hmm. And then he said, now throw all this stuff in there in addition. I give you that. But you set your focus on putting the kingdom first. I am the true vine, Jesus says. And then uh, <clears throat> he says, now you are clean through the word which I have spoken to you. Now that's the juices that flow <laughs> from, from the, the vine into, the, into branches. the branches. Preach, preacher. Huh? Mm -hmm. That's the juice. Amen. That's the life-giving juice that flows from the vine into the branches. Mm. And see, the vine ain't giving up no whole lot of life-giving juice mm. to a branch that ain't... Dry <laughs> up. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> so it says, now you are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Now, over and over again, the Lord does this. Later on, we, we might be talking about the, uh, we might be talking about the uh, 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 parable of the sower. And he says, the seed is the word of God, mm -hmm. falls into the soil. You know, uh, uh, you are clean, Jesus says, through the word which I have spoken unto you. Now, uh, let me, let me, let me say, say this to you. There's a lot of problems come up in life. And many times you have to deal with situations. Mm -hmm. All right? And sometimes we want to get rid of them by emotionalism. We want to get rid of them by uh, some kind of magic, some kind of... But the people who get rid of deep problems and keep them gone are people who come to the Word. Everybody here knows somebody who's gotten over alcoholism, or gotten over drugs, or gotten over porn, or gotten over whatever. And the ones that get over these things are the people who come to mm -hmm. the Word. Mm -hmm. Amen. You cannot shout. Mm -hmm these things away. Amen. Amen. You cannot, huh? You cannot, you cannot uh, praise these things away. <coughs> Amen. When you walk into AA, that's right. They may not, they may be unable to tell you who the, the higher power, power is. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But they tell you, you have to submit yes. to a higher power. Amen. And then they give you the rules for submission. And you look at the rules of submission that came straight out of your Bible. Amen. 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 And the number one they, thing they tell you when you go in there is that you are powerless yes. over this problem. That's right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's number one. Number one. Mm. Mm -hmm. And you know you have. AA, alcohol, SA, 
I mean, you have uh, 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 alcohol anonymous. You have uh, al uh, what's the other one? The drugs. Drugs anonymous. Yes. You know. Yeah. yeah. Well, when you come to Jesus Christ, you come into sinners anonymous. Amen. 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 Huh? Amen. 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 Na narcotics anonymous. They go. They you go over there. They deal with one sin. And then you still got all the rest of them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Mm -hmm. But when you come to Jesus Christ, you come to S.A. Sinners, Sinners Anonymous. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And he picks up the whole, the Lord picks up the whole bag. Mm -hmm. And in order for you to do well, you have to apply the word. I've been studying all kinds of uh, different, oh, different, not all kinds, <laughs> I've got time to study all of them. <laughs> But I've been studying different kinds of uh, 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 addictions and, and things like that. And there's that one trend that I see every time. And that is that submission to the word. And most of the time in emotional churches, people miss the word because the distraction. Uh -huh. The emotion distracts them from seeing the content of the word. Amen. Yeah. So 90% of the people don't get what they're looking for. Mm -hmm. Master servant, you wake up and say, Lord, you wake up and say, Lord, I'm going to serve you with all my heart. And I'm going to do everything in my life to please you. Amen. And guess what? Just like Peter said, repent, be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus for the remission of sins. You can't deal with them things. Amen. You can't deal with them. You can you be, you be struggling all your life trying to make some of that stuff go away. It ain't going away. Mm -hmm. But the Lord will take it away when you submit to his word. In a master's in a servant master relationship. Now you are clean through the word which I've spoken to you. It's the word that cleans you up. It's the word that cleans you up. And uh, and then he says, Now since all of that's true, you abide in me, and I'll abide in you. And it says, A branch cannot bear fruit of itself except it abide in the vine. No more can ye except you abide in me. Relationship, awareness, and serendipity. <clears throat> you abide in him, he abides in you, that's relationship. Awareness, we don't know about vines. We've all had vines of some kind or another. We've all dealt, dealt with vines in some way or another. And then the serendipity. When you abide in the vine, the end result is that you bear fruit. I'm gonna say, how do I know what how I know? Well, I just know I know. No, you don't just know you know. Mm -hmm. Because when you got it right, mm -hmm. your life will produce more disciples. Am I getting there? Man. Huh? You know well I did. You know I was. I went down to the. I went down to the river. The the, the went down the river. Didn't go to stay. So God happy. Prayed all day. That ain't it. No. Mm -hmm. That ain't it. When the, I tell you when the Holy Ghost hit me, that ain't it. <laughs> That's not it. That's not it. You'll know. When you got it right, when you bear fruit. Is that all right? Sorry. Lord, how am I doing? Mm -hmm. He already told you. Mm -hmm. Look around. <coughs> huh? Amen. That's from, that's from the top to the bottom. And you know, one of the one of the things about Ecclesia is that there's no um there's no clergy led relationship. We all in the same boat. Everybody's in the ground the bottom of the cross is level. We all in the same boat. <laughs> the <bottom of> the <laughs> mm -hmm. Huh? 
when you look up at the cross, everybody's standing on level ground. Mm. Abide in me is the brand can I bear fruit of itself, except that abide in the vine, no more can he except you abide in me. I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in, the, I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. Without me, ye can do nothing. nothing. He said, you abiding in me, and I'm abiding in you. You're going to bear fruit. Amen. Now you don't you don't go straight from bearing fruit because a fruit bearing is a serendipity. serendipity. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You abide in him. What do you mean abide in him? I I make him my master. Yes, yeah, sir. I'm coming to this word to be told like what to do. <laughs> I'm coming. I'm, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not talking about just some sort of. Just some sort of social uh, uh, hobbling and whatnot. I'm coming to be told what to do. And if I get it right, I'll know because of the fruit that I bear. Amen? Amen. And if you don't see the fruit, tighten it up. Tighten it up. Hmm. Get on with it. Yeah, amen. <laughs> Tighten it up. Because uh, the Lord's word ain't coming back to him void. And when he tells us what to do, when he tells us these things, he's always telling us the truth. And then he said, If a man abide not in me, he's cast forth as a branch and is withered. And men gather them and cast them into the fire, and they're burned. Now you know what that is. <laughs> Folks been wearing themselves out trying to tell you the hell don't exist. But I'm going to tell you something. <clears throat> if this Bible right, if this Bible right, yes, sir, it's right. And it's always like Mother Hubbard's covered or Mother Hubbard's old lady and she was one. There's always room for one more. Mm. Then he says, if you abide in me, you know what abide means to stay, right? To live. Mm -hmm. Yes. And my words abide in you. You shall ask what you will, and it shall be done unto you. Now, I ain't got nothing to do with Mercedes and Bentleys and mm. new houses. and That's in this context. He's talking about the business of bearing fruit. <laughs> in verse 8, <clears throat> herein is my Father glorified. How many things have you seen people concoct mm. and make up mm -hmm. to glorify God? Mm -hmm. How many, many tricks? Many things, preacher. How many? How many? How many uh, 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 theatrical mm -hmm. uh, plays have people made up? To be able to say they're glorifying God. We've given God the glory. Give God the glory. Clap. Yeah. Give God the glory. Mm -hmm. The only problem is when you read the Bible, there's nobody ever clap to give God the glory. No, sir. Mm -hmm. Stand up and give him some print. Give him some glory. Hey! Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. And you know what happens? The folk go home and they feel like they've been convinced mm -hmm. that they've glorified God. Feel like. Mm -hmm. I told you this stuff is full of deceit. Religion has always been full of deceit. And it's your job to open the scriptures and see what they say. And then have the courage, the sincerity, and the seriousness to just get up and simply follow the word of God. You can't worry about what all so and so. You mad if no one on the ark and his family worried about all them relatives and all them people out there. It wasn't but eight of them, little ugly boat. Mm -hmm. And then they had all them animals on there. Mm -hmm. Would you go in a, would you go on a boat and had lions and tigers, rattlesnakes? Oh, and, huh? Not that. No, not that, no. 
I've been like the people. And they had to get on there with it and and leave all them people behind. The Bible said, no, it was a preacher of righteousness. No, mm -hmm. preacher of the year. Yes, sir. Oh. Yes, Telling sir. them people get on the ark. Yes, sir. What he's saying, I'm simply saying that we should look to see what God has told us in his word and simply do that. Amen. You want God to be glorified? Bear some fruit. Amen. That's how God glorified. Mm -hmm. You can't jump up and down and beat on drums hmm. and think God is glorified. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's one reason why I'm glad we don't have that stuff. Because it, you just it's deceit. And you make people feel like they're pleasing to God when they are not. Amen. God is mad as soot waiting for you to obey him and bear some fruit. And waited on you for 20 years and 30 years and 40 years and 50 years and 60 years for you to obey him so he could, bet, he could put his word in you and enable you to bear fruit. And you're still sitting there. If you keep my commandments, in verse 9, as the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Continue ye in my love. Yes. If you keep my commandments, you shall abide in my love. What is that? Who we'll keep his commandments? Servant master relationship. Mm -hmm. That's all you do. Now you're going to keep somebody else's commandments, you're going to wind up something else. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And you're not going to bear fruit. And then he says, If you keep my commandments, you shall abide in my love. And that lets you know what? If you're not keeping his commandments, then he don't think you love him. But what if the organ plays and you just all just, whoo, tears coming down your eye, I love the Lord. But you're not doing what he said in his word. You're sitting up in something that ain't in the Bible at all. <laughs> if you keep my commandments, you shall abide in my love. Even though I kept my father's commandments and abide in his love. He said, the reason why I abide in God's love is because I do what God told me to do. I desire to be told by God. What to do? Yes. These things have I spoken unto you, that my joy might remain in you, and that your joy might be full. I don't know if you may not have ever experienced it, but when you're busy, when you're busy being fruitful for the Lord and making disciples for the Lord, the joy that you have is almost unexplainable. Yes, sir. <coughs> yes, sir. He said that my joy might be in you and your joy might be full. Yes, sir. Go home and lay down at night and go to sleep yes, sir. with joy. Yes, sir. It'd be like you'd be watching some horror show or something. You go to sleep and have nightmares. <laughs> you go to sleep with joy. Over and over again, I work with people and bringing people to the Lord. And I've never had one while they were actually doing it to be upset and grumpy and all that kind of stuff. It just don't work like that. That's what the devil wants you. The devil wants you to think that, you know, if you work for the Lord and you do his will, that you're not going to... You go, you're not going to be having no fun. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that my joy might be in you, that your joy might be full. When you do the Lord's work, and you do it for the right reason, 
you will have more joy. You won't be fussing. Amen. You, you won't have nothing to fuss about. Huh? You won't be complaining. Yes, sir. So what's wrong with this and what's wrong with that? What's wrong with this one and what's wrong with the other one? That's because you, you ain't got no joy. But your joy might be full. Full joy. That's what the Lord wants you to have. Rumbling around, scared of this, and scared this going to happen. Mm -hmm. I don't know what I'm going to do, this and that and all that and this. And man, and so-and-so done so-and-so to me. And da-da-da-da-da. You ain't got no joy. Need some joy. Amen. Amen. Need some joy. Amen. My joy might be in you. Thank Your you. joy <laughs> might be full. God bless you. Thank you so much for coming tonight. We have three more in this series. And uh, let's let's put the pedal to the metal. And uh, also, um, uh, more than likely, these lessons are going to be on YouTube. And so we, I'm not sure how soon it's going to get on there, but we we working through it, brother. Mm -hmm. Eric's working like a champ, and uh, we working through it, and it's starting to happen. And uh, uh, it's Ecclesia Delaware. Look on YouTube and look it up. And sure. uh, we already have our email address, phone number, and all of that kind of stuff so that people can ask questions. See, that's what we want. We want people, we don't want people just looking to get a feeling and, you know, going about their business and trying to come back next Sunday. There's not no gas station. You come back once a week, fill up, so you can make it to the next week. Yeah, this, that's not what this is about. Uh, ecclesia uh, is very, very different from uh, from church, from the word church. Yes, and we want to uh, we want to just go back and become a part of what the Lord established, and uh, and do His will, and receive all the marvelous blessings that he has in store for us. He wants us to have the joy. He wants us to have all the things that we need, which he promised to give us. The Bible says, our Heavenly Father knoweth that we have need of these things. Yes. If you don't have to spend your whole time just getting <coughs> something to eat, or something to put on, and you know, and ignore the Lord. But because he'll give you, he'll see to it you have those things, as well as the marvelous joy of Jesus Christ in your life. So glad to see everybody, especially glad to see our visitor, Robin. Yeah. Amen. And, uh, Amen. You know, call us to task because uh, whatever we teach, um, whatever we teach, you can verify. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. You can verify. You open the scriptures and see it. And uh, this is one, uh, this, this is one of the very few places in this city where, you know, you, you can open the scriptures and see what is being taught and if it's not what's being taught if it's what is being taught you do it if it's not what's being taught let us know and we'll all change mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but we want to do what the lord has given us to do and uh we want to uh be pleasing to him in every way amen amen, amen. we have a